Welcome back. My next guest is one of the pioneers in the venture capital field, Alan Patrikov. For over 40 years, Alan has played a huge role in growing the field into the institutional bedrock that it is today. In 1977, he co-founded Apex Partners, which is now one of the world's largest private equity firms. And over the years, the firm currently has $41 billion under management. That is Apex. In 2004, Patrikov stepped back from the daily duties at Apex and two years later co-founded Graycroft Partners, a venture capital firm that focuses on the early digital media investment and expansion. That firm now with about a billion dollars under management. Alan Patrickoff joining us. Great to see you. Nice to be here. Thank you so much for joining us, Alan. And so you're the perfect person to talk about what the heck is going on right now. This week, technology was so strong. A number of uh, the so-called FANG stocks hitting all-time highs. Tell us what you see in terms of money moving, in terms of the environment for media and tech right now from the private sector. Yeah, I, the private sector, it's... Uh, as strong as I've seen it in all the years I've been in this business, it's the market, you know, the question is, are we seeing irrational exuberance? Are we seeing an overheated market? I can't tell you. All I can say is if you're a young, early stage startup or someone looking for expansion capital, if you've got a good team and you've got a good concept, uh, money will not be your uh, restricting element. I mean, there's just a lot of money in the funds that want to invest. and. Uh, so it couldn't be better. And of course, the IPO market has opened up in the last few months. Uh, the last four or five deals have gone from 50 to 75 to 100 percent premiums after wow. they opened. Uh, uh, we are not, we take the reality that most companies in the venture business don't get public, they get sold in a private transaction. So we are less concerned with the, private, with the public market. But in terms of all of the money slashing around, that, that's good news, although I guess it makes it harder to compete because a lot of people are willing to fund these early, these early companies. Well, it's the reason we restricted the size. The reason I run a billion instead of 41 billion is I want to, when I started, re, restarted, went back, back to my roots, uh, uh, back to the future, you might say, I wanted to make sure we would stay a venture firm so we have controlled our funds of not being more than a couple hundred million dollars uh, which affects how you invest and what your reasonable expectations for exit are so uh, the good news is yes for a startup there's a lot of money uh, bad news perhaps is that there's a lot of people who have a lot of money and funds that they've got to invest so there is a certain amount of uh, let's say, uh, high price, yeah, exuberance <laughs> in terms of pricing and, uh, and people putting perhaps in some cases more money into transactions than are needed. Uh, one of the things that concerns me more than anything else is you're seeing a lot of very young companies because they can't satisfy the demand of big funds to put money to work are sell, become selling shareholders. So imagine a company that's a year old or two years old and all of a sudden the founders are cashing out primarily to satisfy the demand for their stock, which they don't want to uh, have more dilution for. Interesting. It's a, it, so it, it, it's not all good. So does it, does it concern you that there's so much money sloshing around the world that maybe we're getting too exuberant? Well, so far we haven't seen uh, any uh, uh, dramatic f fall off. Uh, and, you know, like everything else, everyone says, you know, we've had, what, eight, nine years of consistent, ten years of consistent growth. Yeah. Uh, is, we've had about the same in the venture business. I timed it very well starting in 2006 again. Uh, and uh, uh, so far everything looks good. Uh, and. I definitely, we're not seeing the same conditions we saw in 2000 and 2001, which were pretty rough times. Uh, companies today seem to have better thought out plans, management teams that are more experienced, and uh, technologies advanced. So, you know, it's a. You know, mixed bag. Health, healthy time, it Very. seems like. You, you, you've been focused on a couple of areas, uh, media, fintech, direct-to-consumer, uh, as well as sports technology. Tell us where you see the growth in those areas or any other areas. Where is the growth right now in venture capital? Well, obviously, everyone's interested in cybersecurities. I mean, that's the, the uh, excuse me, cyber 
concern, not security, cyber warfare, cyber control, and we've made some investments in that area. Uh, policing the dark web, uh, protecting uh, equipment so that it doesn't get penetrated, uh, and it's a very good area. I wouldn't, it's hot, but it's also a good thing because it's a whole new world that's opened up as a result of all the uh, uh, intrusions and hacking we've seen, obviously, in the political area to start with. How long before you look for an exit strategy? I mean, is, is it always that eventually these companies go public, or do you hold and invest for a long time? Tell me your strategy. Uh, realistically, I mean, it's a good question to ask because I think people are confused about it. Venture capital, in my opinion, is a much longer range business than people have thought. Back in the, I hate to go back, but in the 70s or 80s, you could invest in a company, and two years later, it could be public, and it with no revenues, certainly no profits. Today, there's a much more discerning uh, IPO market. You really have to be at a certain level of, of revenue. So we don't, and that's why, again, it goes back to the size of our fund. We realistically believe that companies should be capitalized efficiently. We don't want capital intensive companies. We want companies that can make it with a uh, reasonable amount raised. and. We expect that most of our companies, and it's proven true so far, in, in 12 years of operation, every one of our companies has, that have been sold has been sold in a private transaction, an M&A, and we've had some very good acquisitions uh, up in the you know, high hundreds of millions. I don't know if any of our companies have hit the billion dollar level in sales, in uh, transaction value, but uh, certainly approaching that, we've got several in the portfolio now that are going to reach that level.